back to Dark Blood Mechanical. Last time we looked at our marine motor, the bottom end was complete. So now we're ready to continue the top end, starting off with the heads. So what I have here to finish fastening these heads down is a set of manly bolts. We're gonna use our ARP lubricant on the head of the bolt to get the correct torque sequence. We are not gonna use ARP along the threads like the previous bolts. What we're actually gonna use is Permatex Aviation Forma Gasket, the 3H. And the reason why you have to use this is because there are through holes in the block which are where your coolant passages pass. So if you use regular ARP lubricant, that pressure from the water will actually penetrate through the threads and it'll actually come out of these little holes and it'll actually mix in with all your oil. So this is what prevents that water to oil mixture uh, from occurring. So we're gonna to torque this down now and I'm gonna use three increments. The final torque spec on these bolts is 65 foot pounds. So I'm gonna do 35, 55, and then 65 on the last step. The other thing is this head, the way that these get torqued is you're gonna do a spiral sequence, starting from the center and then work your way out. So now we're ready to set our valve lash. As I was mentioning previously, both these lifters are in their down position all the way down, which means that both these valves should be 100% shut. What that means is I'll be able to set the valve lash on both of these valves at the same time. We'll start off by putting both push rods in place. We're gonna put both rockers in. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna tighten this nut down and I'm gonna keep rotating this push rod until it just feels snug. So right about here, I'm able to spin this, and if I just do an eighth of a turn, I can't spin it anymore. So what I'll usually do is I'll try to find some spot on the engine that I can line up my wrench to. So this is kind of like perpendicular with the rest of the head. And from here, I basically do one quarter turn to start off with. And then I just leave it at that. So by doing this one quarter turn, what it's doing is this plunger is like a little bit of a pump and it, it can go in and it can come out and it's spring loaded and it's also pressurized by the oil. And what that does is whenever this plunger moves up and down, it actually pumps oil up this push rod and it comes out the little orifice over here on the rocker to help lubricate everything up on top. So you have to have this thing with some kind of a preload. You can't have it at zero lash. It has to have some kind of a load on it. So I'm gonna be doing this as efficiently as possible by cranking the motor over and I'm gonna be fastening two rockers at the same time on the firing order. So what that means is cylinder number one is done. I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna wait for the intake and exhaust to be fully shut on cylinder number eight since cylinder number eight is next in the firing sequence.
So I've let the silicone dry for about five to 10 minutes so it starts to cure. And now I'm ready to put the gaskets and the intake as well. So this particular small block Chevy, because of the heads, the outer corners are blind holes, so they don't need any thread sealants or any silicone to stop any oil from backing out. So only these center bolts are gonna need any kind of thread sealant. Now that I've given the silicone another 15 to 20 minutes to dry up, I'm going to start tightening down these bolts. You can torque them down to around 20 to 30 foot-pounds, but by hand is pretty much good enough. So for getting a base point on a distributor, I usually put the crank a few degrees before top dead center on cylinder number one and ensure that I'm under the compression stroke. So one thing to note here is that traditionally, when you first assemble an engine, this should actually be aimed at cylinder number one. It's just a rule of thumb, but it's, it's not gospel. The reason why I'm doing it the opposite is I have this thing specifically aimed in this direction, and that's because the distributor cap on this particular engine happens to be set up with cylinder number one back here. So right now, cylinder number one is at top dead center during the compression stroke or a few degrees just before it. And therefore my pointer is a couple of degrees just before cylinder number one spark over here.
So that will conclude our Mercury rebuild project. We started off with a cracked block and now we have a completely finished engine from top to bottom. I've covered everything from the teardown up to the engine starting. There's a lot more detail that goes into these engines and I didn't cover everything. So if you guys have any questions, post them in the comments below. In the meantime, stay tuned for the next project and I'll catch you guys next time. Sorry, bitch, I don't say sorry. Uh,